Step 3. BB84 protocol. This protocol is a quantum protocol, therefore Alice and Bob can uh, utilize a public quantum channel as well as their public classical channel. So here we've got Alice and Bob again, and they can communicate over this public quantum channel. What Alice does to begin the protocol is she generates two n-bit strings. We're going to call the first n-bit string A. So there's n bits in her string A. We're going to denote them A1, A2, up to AN. And the second bit string we're going to denote as B, and there's B1, B2, all the way up to BN. And then what she does is she creates quantum states according to these bit strings as follows. For each two bits from A and B, she takes them and creates one qubit. And then she creates n such qubits, and the whole state will be uh, denoted by psi. So, if her qubits AK and BK are 0, 0, then she encodes the qubit, she prepares the qubit in a state 0. If AK and BK are 1, 0, then she prepares state 1. Similarly, if they are 0, 1, she prepares state plus, and if they are uh, 1, 1, she prepares the state minus. So, we can see that a bit coming from the bit string B determines the basis of uh, Alice's encoding. If it's zero, as we can see in both of these cases here and here, she uh, prepares the qubit in the Z basis. If it's one, as we see in this case and in this case, then she prepares the qubits in the X basis. And AK then uh, chooses which state from the basis she prepares. If A is zero, she prepares the plus one eigenstate. If it's one, she prepares the minus one eigenstate. Notice that these states are not orthogonal. For example, if we take the inner product between psi zero zero and psi one zero, uh, psi zero one, like here, we see that they are not orthogonal, meaning that their inner product is non-zero. In this particular case, it's one over square root of two. Same if we take, for example, the state uh, psi 1, 0 and psi 1, 1. Again, we will get that the inner product is non-zero. When this happens, when the inner product is non-zero, it means that the two states are not perfectly distinguishable. And this is crucial uh, ingredient in this protocol. So what does it mean for two states to be non-distinguishable? Uh, uh, Let's consider a case where we are measuring in the Z basis and we are given two states. One state is the zero state and the other state is the one state. If this happens, we see that they are orthogonal. It means we can perfectly distinguish them. So if we just keep measuring the incoming qubits, if the qubit is in zero, we will always get the plus one outcome. On the other hand, if the qubit is in one, we will go always get minus one outcome. So with certainty, we can distinguish whether the incoming qubit is a zero or a one. Same thing applies if we are measuring in the X basis and we are given only state plus or state minus, like here. If we keep measuring X and we get this state, then it will, the outcome will be always plus one with 100% um, probability. If on the other hand we get a minus state and we measure it in the X, we will get outcome minus one all the time. So in this uh, sense, we can distinguish plus and minus if we measure in the X basis. On the other hand, let's say that we are given these following states, zero or a plus, and we measure in the Z basis. So if we measure the zero state, like we said, we always get the plus one outcome. That's fine. But if we measure the second state, the plus state, there's a 50% probability that we get the outcome plus one and 50% probability that we get the probability uh, that we get the outcome minus one. So if we get a state zero, all is good. But if we get the state plus, sometimes we will get a plus one and sometimes we will get a minus one. If we get the minus one state, fine. We can say we know that this state is plus. But if we get the plus one outcome, we are unsure whether the state is a plus or whether it's a zero. In this sense, the states are non-distinguishable. We can do the same thing in the X basis. And here the scenario is reversed. 
we can all, we, with certainty, we can say that we get plus one outcome here. But if, uh, if we get in the x, if we measure in the x basis and we receive the state zero, sometimes it will be a plus one and sometimes a minus one. So let's consider an example of the encoding. Let's say that Alice generates string A, which is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and string B, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So then she starts encoding. She looks at the first uh, bit in her string B, which is 1. So she knows now I have to encode in the X spaces. And the uh, state that she prepares is a plus state because uh, uh, her first bit in the A string is a 0. So that's her first qubit that she prepares. The second qubit, she looks at uh, the second bit in her string B, which is again 1. So again, she knows she has to prepare a state from the X basis. And uh, the state uh, is given by this uh, second bit in string A, which is 1. Therefore, she prepares the state minus. And then she go goes on and on until she prepares all n qubits. What she does then is she sends these qubits to Bob over the public uh, quantum channel. Now let's consider what Bob knows at this time. He actually doesn't know what these states are because Alice did not share the secret uh, string B containing information about the uh, preparation basis with anybody. She kept it secret. Therefore, all Bob knows is that he's receiving qubits and they can be uh, any of the four possible states, 0, 1, plus, minus. But what he does, he goes on anyway and he creates his own uh, random bit string, which we are going to denote as uh, B prime. And again, because uh, he's expecting n qubits, he generates n uh, bits, B1 prime, B2 prime, um, all the way until Bn prime. And what he then does, he just measures in the basis given by this uh, um, bit string. So similarly to Alice, if b prime, if the bit b prime k is zero, then he measures in the z basis, and if it's in one, then he measures in the x basis. This allows him to generate his own uh, random bit string, which we will denote a prime. So if the outcome of the kth measurement on the qubits is plus one, then he will assign zero to a bit a prime k. If it's minus one, then he assigns a bit one to uh, uh, a prime k. And this way he generates his own a prime random bit string. What then happens is that Alice and Bob, they share information with each other over a public classical channel. Alice shares her randomly generated uh, bit string n, and Bob shares his randomly generated bit string b prime. So they exchange uh, information about the basis in which the qubits were prepared and in which they were measured. And what they do is if they measured and prepared in the same basis, they will keep the corresponding bits from uh, a and a prime. If they measured in uh, different bases, then they just discard the uh, bits a and a k and a prime. Why? Because as we said, if Alice prepares in a certain basis and Bob measures in that basis, the two states, the two possible states are orthogonal, meaning they are perfectly distinguishable by measurement in that basis. So it allows Bob and Alice to generate a perfectly correlated key. So the so the bits that they keep, we're going to denote as a uh, bar and a bar prime, and they are perfectly correlated, meaning that these two shorter bit strings that they generated are in fact equal. And now they are sharing a key that they can use in the next step, which is encryption of the data. So for example, how does it work? Let's again consider a case where uh, n is equal to five. So Alice has uh, uh, randomly generated uh, five bit strings, A and B. B tells her in which basis she should encode. A tells her what the state should be. So she prepares the following states, minus zero, plus, minus one. Bob generates his own random bit string, B prime. 
Again, this bit string is different from Alice's B because he doesn't know Alice's B at this time. And he just measured in the basis given by B prime. So here, uh, the first uh, bit in B prime is one, therefore he measures in X. On the second bit, it's again one, therefore he measures in X and so on and so forth. And you can see that since in the first, for the first qubit, Alice encoded the qubit in uh, basis X and Bob measured in basis X. Therefore, Bob will always, with 100% probability, get the outcome minus one, which we said corresponds to a bit string A prime, which is equal to one. And we see that in this case, A prime one is the same as Alice's A one. On the other hand, in this, for the second qubit, Alice prepared the qubit in the Z basis. But because Bob's uh, as, um, random bit B prime two is given by one, he measured in the X basis. So with 50% probability, he can obtain zero. With 50% probability, he can obtain one. So they cannot be sure that they are really sharing a correlated bit. Therefore, they discard this bit. For the third qubit, again, the, the Alice prepared in the same basis as uh, Bob measured. Therefore, they know in this place they can, share, they can keep this bit and use it as part of their secret key. And in this way, they can generate shorter keys, but which are 100% correlated. So here we see in the first, for the first bit, they keep it. Second one, they discard. Third one, they keep it. Fourth one, they discard. And the last one, they also keep. So the shared key that they have is given by one, zero, one. So here's the summary of uh, the protocol so far. Alice starts by generating two n-bit strings, A and B. B is used for uh, basis of the, uh, of the preparation, whereas A tells which state of that particular basis Alice should prepare the qubit in. If BK is equal to zero, then she prepares in the Z basis. If BK is equal to one, she prepares in the X basis. Then Alice sends these qubits to Bob over a public quantum channel. Bob measures randomly either in Z or X basis. After the measurements are completed and only after that, they are allowed to share the information about the preparation basis and the measurement basis. And they keep the uh, uh, bits only where they prepared and measured in the same basis. Again, they do that because they are guaranteed that uh, in this scenario, uh, the results that are generated are 100% correlated. And whatever is left uh, of the key, they use as a secret key for uh, encoding and decoding their um, messages. Now, so far, we have only considered the ideal scenario where there was no eavesdropper. Now, let's say that somebody is listening to both the public classical channel, but also the public quantum channel. So we are going to consider the effect of an eavesdropper, which we are, who we are going to name Eve, and see uh, what effect that has on the protocol and how the protocol can actually discover the presence of such an eavesdropper.